Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Deep Dive. Sorry, we're about 25 minutes late. <laughs> um, we've been doing another show on Redman Plus, and it ran over, but it was dead interesting. It was about Josh's book called Data Game. It's available at all good bookshops. It's absolutely fantastic. You need to find out about the story of Liverpool FC's analytics revolution from the man himself, best-selling author Josh Williams, joins me today for this one. Um, we're going to get straight into it. It's Q&A time, Josh. Um, it is, yeah. I'm going to start off with one of my favourite questions um, from Sam Fell 16 who just says, if for whatever reason we can't get Zabi, who is the next best alternative on the market? Um, I think it's a tricky one. I'd, I'd probably go with Amram or I really like the Zabi. I know a lot of people don't. But, uh, that annoys me, that. <laughs> Why? Because I was going to say there's everything and I'd be slightly different to you. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you were going to say as in like because I ate him or something. No, because no, I didn't I... think you were going to say it. I thought you were just going to leave it at Amarin, but then you took my one as well. No, I, I am a big fan of the Zerby. Like, I've made that quite clear so far, but a, a lot of people don't seem to be sold. Is so. it a temperament thing, do you think, with the Zerby? I think people are, too, are people are a bit too inclined to look at the results Brighton have got. Um, this season in particular, and 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 think he's not good enough for Liverpool. But you've got to remember his his influence is limited. Like the, look at the players he's dealing with. He's just sold his best. I keep saying he's just sold his best two players last summer, and his other best players have been injured for, for large portions of the season. We're not going to see Matoma at Anfield over the weekend. That's the opinions had lots of time out. Um, so you know Belaber who who got into uh, replace Casado has not really played much. He's going to be good, but he's not he's not ready yet. The Hood was the McAllister replacement. He's already back in Germany because it didn't work. So I think if you look at the Zerbi and what his isolated impact is, and you put the Zerbi's playing style with Liverpool's players, I think Liverpool look really good. So yeah, they might too. Like I, I too. agree with that. I, I, I do like Amarin, and I, what I will say is, I've got a I've got a sneaky suspicion that Amarin's formation, as it currently is at Sporting would work better with our players than Alonso's. Mm. I think there are quite... Alonso's are unquestionably brilliant tactics, unquestionably are brilliant, but right now I think our players would suit Amarim's style more than Alonso's, mm. and you might need to do a couple of signs. That is to say if he comes in with the same tactics anyway. Yeah. Because sometimes managers come in like Ancelotti, just goes, what have I got? Yeah. Well, 4 3 one then, or 4 3 3 Exactly, whatever. yeah. I think you come in with principles, don't you? And you, and, and you, your formation all that adapts based on the players that you've got. But um, it, it is interesting to see what's going to happen. Like a few outside the box shouts as well as uh, uh, Roger Schmidt, is he? At, uh, at Benfica, he's an interesting one. Simone Inzaghi is doing really well as well. Uh, Nigelsman is probably an outside shout, but if Germany do well, he's probably going to stay on, do you reckon? Oh, clock. Don't know. <laughs> Don't know, to be honest with you. I'm not sure. We'll move on then. Um, Jack's MCL. Would Prime Benitez succeed at a club like Liverpool now if he was to start his respective manager career now? Or is he too one dimensional and subsequently the game has evolved? It's a good question, isn't it? I do think he's. Um, I do think the game's evolved. I do think now he is a bit of a dinosaur in the sense that he, he was always kind of of the, of the belief that. You attack with a certain number of players, usually the three, no more than three, but you defend as a as a, as unit, a unit type thing. Whereas I think the game has gone down the route of everyone attacks, everyone defends as as one one unit basically. I think he's a bit too reliant on individuals in the final third to do him a favour. Um, but nevertheless, like absolute elite coach at at the time of his his peak, um, you know, he, he, at, he was at the point where he was. He was the, the the next big thing. He was he was revolutionising it, but I do think the game's got away a little bit in in that sense. And I think he's kind of of the the old school Mourinho uh, kind of school. Um, yeah. uh, to, to, to sort of add on to that, obviously massively respect him. Think he was an absolute genius. Don't know whether he'd still be the same if he was coming through now. It's fair to say, because you'd have had that extra fifteen years of growing up and seeing the game change. You'd probably change it yourself. I do still feel there's a place for p- managers like Rafa Benitez, though. I just don't think they're going to win leagues. 
No, I no. think they're just much more likely to win cups and individual yeah. games of football and, and stuff like that rather than the consistency of a Manchester City or Liverpool over the last few years, etc, etc. But absolutely his team could beat any team on the day and they always will do because yeah. of the way that he, way that he sets them up. Yeah, I completely um, agree with that. Callum Buck, does Keller in goal affect how we play? How does our build-up differ to when Alisson is there? Are defenders more brave as this change on Keller's time in the net? Do you want me to take this one first? Yeah. I don't think it has changed too much, to be honest with you. The only thing that I think's different is we are having less attacks from the goalkeeper, um, as in less big balls over the top, basically, to the likes of Mo Salah and stuff, because, um, oh, well, yeah, Salah's not been there, to be fair, but you know what I mean? That might be one of the reasons. It might be a cause and effect thing. No Salah means that out ball's not always on. He has done it, but nowhere near as much as Alisson. Um, I don't think it's had too much impact, though, other than that. I think Liverpool have played with the same high line. He's been just as brave with the ball at his feet as Alisson Becker, if not more. Um, maybe hasn't gone into the back four quite as much as we've seen when... Alisson's done it at times when the goalkeeper just steps up into there or whatever but I don't think there's been any real change other than that No I completely agree yeah I think he's I don't think he's that different profile wise to the extent where you do need to to install these changes I think he's just a a watered down version of Alisson basically I think he can do similar things and he can play with his feet he can sweep and all that stuff I think the one as you say the one element we have been missing maybe is when he gets the ball in his hand catches a corner or whatever or I think that initial where's Salah ball over the top and the ball doesn't bounce until it drops here we've maybe had a bit less of that um, but I actually think in 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 a lot of departments he's um, he's actually better with his feet than Alisson now yeah. when, when the ball's on the floor at least I think well, also as well in, in terms of his expected goals and how many goals he's stopped He's performed better. Yeah, than yeah, he's done well. Yeah, it's a still a small sample size. It could obviously revert to the mean or whatever over the over the next ten games if if he was to play them. But he is actually having a better season than Allison in almost every department in the data. It's just a very small sample size. Twenty five percent of the games so far this season, though Callow has played the nets for us. Seventy five percent of them Allison. Um, but he is overperforming. In fact, I read something on the analyst about it. I'll see if I can pull it up now. Um, just before, which is why the 75-25 thing was in my head so much. Um, i just scroll down to the goalkeepers. Where's the players' stuff here? Player. There we go. I don't, have you got my um, thingy still? No? Okay, well, it's not gone there, but yeah. <laughs> it was interesting anyway, so you can check that article out. Um, here's one for you. Paul underscore LFC3 asks, what has been the key to Jürgen's success at Liverpool tactically? What's been ever-present in all of his Liverpool teams? I think the counter press yes. is, is the big one. Um, not only is it allowed Liverpool to obviously create chances and and keep the ball away from our goal uh, in a defensive sense, but it just it, it just allows you to dominate. It allows you to dominate the ball and, and dominate the game, and you naturally end up accumulating upwards of fifteen twenty shots a game because the ball's always in the final third and it never leaves it. And you end up facing about, you know, nine or something like that. You know, if, if you if you're unlucky, to be honest. Um, but that counter press element, that you know, it's it's definitely something Klopp kind of brought to, to Liverpool and to the Premier League. Really, I think Guardiola brought a different kind of counter press where you regain the ball and then immediately recycle and start the next possession. Klopp brought the counter press as in. It's it's a killer, as in like if you regain the ball, 10. yeah. If you regain the ball, the next pass is forwards, and you you go for the throat basically. So that's obviously been a huge trait of of the modern Liverpool, and and on top of that, if you think I'm in like formations, that the four three three has mm. has been ever present specifically on the defensive side. On the attacking side, we've moved a little bit away from that nowadays, but um, the original four three three with Firmino doing that, and Mane and Salah doing that. That was on on you know cutting into their preferred foot as well to then find the back, the far corner. Ideally, that was really like so effective that you know at the time, and, and no one was really doing it either. Messi was doing false nine stuff, but Messi was doing it with um, with like Henri and and whoever else it was staying really high and wide, and by doing that you create a lot of space here because you got the the opposition back four kind of like stretch like that. And if you've got if you've got Messi going like that, 
you know, you've got a real problem there. You're creating massive space for Xavi and Iniesta and Messi to just dominate the middle of the mm -hmm. park. Liverpool's, you know, front three, just absolute harmony. You know, I've always said they could play together like the strangers. You know, if, if, if they'd never known each other, it would work as a dynamic if they'd never met. So they're probably the two main, you know, tactical elements for me. Okay. Uh, I'm going to skip a question. We're going to go down to David Thompson's question next, if that's okay. Um, it was a simple one. Can you talk to me about the setup that Ruben Amarin uses at Sporting? Yeah. I'm, qu I'm quite happy to go through this if you want. Or yeah, well we can we can both. Yeah, it's four, it's three four three, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so it's obviously it's three four three like that in the main sort of middle area of the field. Now what's really interesting here is I'm just going to take it back because it's actually a four two five in low. So it starts off like this, and these guys are quite narrow and stuff like that. With the goalkeeper stepping up into the back line there. And then it moves into the 3-4-3 three, three as you sort of move through the through the pitch. And it's still narrow and, and, and stuff like that. That's sort of three, box three. Uh, and then it goes to a 3-2 and five. And the idea here is to start exploiting half spaces yeah. um, in between full-backs and centre-backs and, and stuff like that. Um, obviously, it's a, a high line when defending as well. In fact, it's a, it can get very, very high, like this high, over the halfway <laughs> line high. Mm. Um, so that's sort of in terms of, of, of attack. And then, actually, when you get into the defending side of things, you can start... Wrong, guys. You can start to pull these guys right back into a five almost. And then a narrow three as well. Uh, and quite often what will happen actually on the edge of the penalty area. You see the goalkeeper has the ball there. And then you've got maybe two full backs, let's say a couple of uh, a defensive midfielder with a midfielder there. What will happen is it's actually the attacking wingers jobs to stop the pass to here. The centre forward. Um, Victor, what's his name? The, the Swedish. Gio Keres, is it? Gio Keres will drop back, like a bit like Firmino, but in the defensive things, and then he's to stop passes out here. Yeah. Um, and then and then it drops back into um, blocking passing lanes and, and, and stuff like that. And obviously, that was a quick sort of run through of it, but it's it's not too dissimilar to what we've been doing, to be honest with you. Other than you are stating that you are using three defenders at the back. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really modern and contemporary way of playing. Like, and obviously he has a, a big emphasis on his defenders to to build the game for him. I think Anasio is is a player, for example, who sees a lot of the ball for them, pokes the most progressive passes in the league comfortably, usually, certainly for defenders. Um, so yeah, it's it, it, I can see why Liverpool uh, are very interested in him, and, and and you know I think I read something that the regardless of what happens, do you want to do you want to at least interview him? You know, I can I can absolutely see that, and, and and the narrow stuff as well explains why they've got arguably the best defence in Europe. You know, right up there with Arsenal in terms of just being really difficult to progress through because they're just well, really well drilled and well organised. And again, if you look at the players that he's got, and you imagine what that would look like if you then give him Liverpool's players, better players, it's scary, isn't it? Scary yeah, thoughts. So. It is. It is, and it's very similar to what we're doing now as well, which is interesting. I'm going to move on then, uh, Kate Palmita. Um, I said, if Zabi were to become the new manager, what personnel changes do you think he'd make to the team, if any, to better suit the way his current team plays, Josh? Interesting question. I don't think Alonso would come in and use the system he's used at Leverkusen. Might be wrong, could, but I don't think that's the way it's going to happen. I think he's going to come in with his principles, which we've established, like, you know, Lots and lots of possession, lots of short passes, moving everywhere as a unit, you know, not leaving defenders back there and forwards up here. Um, so I think all that will remain. Um, but in in terms of like what he'll do to individuals, it it, it is interesting. I, I I said it might have been last week. I said Trent. I can see Trent as a as a midfielder for him, like. But then we already have a fair few midfielders. And a lot of them look like eights. So if you've got eights like that, you difficult to play with a two if you've got so many eights like that. Um could explore the prospect of like two tens or something, but it it, it is difficult to determine like exactly how you'll interpret the squad and 
you know, we need a new centre half if, if he was going to use a back three and things like that. So, have you got any thoughts on this one? No, it's a, it's too hard. I mean, as, as I mentioned the other week, when someone asked us, like James Orcott, um, James Orcott, James Orcott had a fantastic video on this, um, and. I would only be robbing his thoughts, they're not my thoughts, I hate doing that, so I'd rather just <laughs> point you in the direction of James's video, which I don't think I could do it as good as he's done it anyway, um, to be fair. Um, I don't obviously, think... the, like, the right-back's completely different to Trent Alexander-Arnold, and Frimpong's just a big dribbler, and he, like, you know what I mean? Essentially a, a mad, chicky right-winger, and then you've got Florian Wirtz, who's a 10, who comes from the outside and, and, and I mean, left and stuff like that, so it's very different. I don't know if this is worth doing, but if if, if he is going to bring his system, how do you think it would look then? Because I I think it's pretty obvious, really, isn't it? I think one of the problems you've got is the, the two tens element, where Liverpool have obviously got forwards, so whether you would want Diaz, well, I suppose you would, actually. But it would probably be Virgil, do you think? Yeah. Uh, hang on. Canate, Gomez. You wouldn't have gone to him. And you wouldn't have a left footer there, then? Not next season. The, the, this is the problem. It's, well, it's not a problem, but like you think of the the eight Liverpool have got, I suppose two of them could play here, but then you've got the forwards to do that. For this, is this for Pong and this is Verts? Uh, that would be Vert. That would yeah. be uh, Grimaldo. Grimaldo, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I reckon that would be Bradley. Yeah. In this system, at least. Yeah. Um, that would be Robertson. Or Trent. It's probably a better shoot. For the left. For Grimaldo's position. Yeah, for, yeah, you're probably right there, yeah. And then here, I mean, what, it's, it's what you do with this. That would have to be Salah. Yeah. Because we've seen him become more and but, more of a creator over the years. It's just, we would see a different Salah. But then Sobuslai's here then. Yeah, it's wild. Sobuslai plays, you know, and, and again, similar here. To be fair, McAllister could do that. McAllister could, could do any, and like that, so that would be relatively easy. Nunes definitely gets that. See, it doesn't work with the players that we've got, does it? it I don't think. It's, there's, there's, You're there's, sacrificing there's, too much because if you... I, I think in an ideal world, the best players suited for those positions, right, are McAllister and Sobuslai. Mm. And that's then Nunes. Where the fuck's Salah? Where's Diaz? Where's Jota? Yeah, where's your goals? <laughs> exactly. When you think about it. Um, so, I think there's an element of square pegs, round holes, if, you, if you're doing that. Which I just, takes us back to your point of not sure you necessarily do it straight away. Yeah, I, I don't... I think we've got too many eights. I mean, I suppose you could do... That. You know, with, with a... Rather than 3-4-3, three, three, it'd be 3-5-2. With a sitter. And, and and they could then join or something, but I don't know. I I, I can't see it personally. No. But you know, it would be interesting to see if he does go for it. Like. Okay. Um Derek Oswald, if you had to make one sign in to improve our current start in eleven, who would it be? And it doesn't need to be players, who are you upgrading on? What position are you upgrading so on? So don't need to pick a you don't need to pick a player, I, I think. I looked away from the question. What position would it be in? Right. Your book gave me my answer, believe it or not. <laughs> this is an insistent one. Alison, no. Uh, Virgil, no, obviously. Uh, <laughs> Nunes, no. Salah, no. Mm. Right back, no, absolutely fine. Got two of them there. That's obviously no. Do you want to go? Yeah, I was wondering that. Can I say when he's playing, it's absolutely fine there. I think it's on this side of the field, isn't it? It's it's either Robertson, who could potentially be be moving past it, or the output of this guy. You they, should read this book I've read recently called Data Game by Josh <laughs> Williams, right? Because he talked about the biggest difference being goal difference. Yeah. And the easiest place to upgrade, I think, on the field in terms of how many goals you're going to add to the side is Louis Diaz. Yeah. I think the only problem is Diaz is boss and Gapo is a very is a good player and Jota can play there. So Don't Diaz, the messenger. No, I know what you mean. I know what you're saying, though. No, I know what you're saying. <laughs> and I sat here on a on a live stream last week, by the way, and said I absolutely wouldn't make that signing. 
because I think he's a boss player, like what you've just said. But I said on the on the news show last week, it's such a big risk selling a player for a hundred million quid and buying another player for a hundred million quid. It, you're just not guaranteed it. Yeah. But I think that with the people in it, that's the position where you can make the most impact. I think on the results that Liverpool have. Yeah. Whether I would, I I, I think it'd be stupid to get rid of a player you know is boss for someone you think might be. Mm. It's just it's a big old risk. No, for me. no, I agree with you. I I also I do think Robertson though is is uh, an interesting one. Like just in terms of a left back, if we could get another left back who who has an impact like like that, like Pete Robertson did. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean he's still alright to be fair, but it's difficult. It's, I mean it shows the, the strength of the squad to be fair, doesn't it? It does, mate. Uh, I'm going to skip a couple here, mate. If that's okay, and go to unsociableist. If we can do that one. Uh, of the current squad, who do you think would be the best future manager? Um, I've got one if you want me to go first while you have a little think. Go on, you go first. I think... It's a great, great, great question, by the way. Uh, it is a great question. I think it's Alexi McAllister. Okay. He crossed my mind, like... I, I do, it's a really hard one, so let me know yours in the, uh, in the comments section, of course. I just think understanding a few different positions and you know being a bit of a pass master in the way that the game's going and mm. stuff like that might be the way to do it. What I will say is he's a little bit short for me <laughs> for, to be a manager. Like, Soberslai would come across like a great manager. Suit, you know what I mean? Yeah. Black shirt, black tie, black suit. Um, I think fantastic. McAllister might be a little too short to be a manager, but I think he's got the qualities <laughs> needed to do it. And he drinks tea. You can imagine him on the side there with his, his mate or whatever it's called. I, I think McAllister is is arguably Liverpool's smartest player. So I, I can see the thinking definitely. But I think when it comes to a manager, you also need to have the leadership elements. And I'm not saying he hasn't got that, but he doesn't strike me as a charismatic, loud as voice in the room he doesn't he, Dominant you don't figure. need to be loud He's, to be charismatic Josh you need, have he, you seen him with me <laughs> matter I can't see him giving the team talk I just can't oh yeah you're probably right he, he seems too quiet He's too to short me. I've said that <laughs> <laughs> I, I think an outside the box shout is Thiago for me okay Thiago okay has got the, the voice and uh, he's obviously got the experience brilliant brilliant player working with Guardiola I about him Midfielder, yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not surprised to be fair. I think we all have, but uh, yeah, I'd go Thiago, you know. Okay, I yeah. think that's a great shout to be honest with you. Obviously, mm. he's played for Barcelona, he's played for Bayern Munich, he's played for Liverpool. We know there's another manager in world football that has, has had a, a similar ish pass, <laughs> uh, path. It's obviously not Barcelona, it's Real Madrid, but um, if you can do that and you're a midfielder, you're probably going to be golden. Um, I am going to move on then. Segson, I thought this was a great question. Yeah, it is. What do you think is the future of football in a tactical sense? Is there any manager out there with some new approach that might change things? Yeah, really good question. Um, I think the future of football in a tactical sense, I think players in the next like decade or so are just going to become more and more and more complete yeah. where, where you move away. Did you read mine? No, no. Have you, have you wrote that? <laughs> well, this is in my book as well, so maybe you got it from there. It's not. It's not. <laughs> well, I think uh, <laughs> I think the idea of a specialist is going out the window. I think you might you might get it with centre halves and, and obviously a goalkeeper, but everyone else I think is becoming more and more expected to just play wherever you need it. I think we're going to see more and more James Milners who can just jack of all trades and and play anywhere and. I think that's that's going to have an obvious impact on on your tactics, and I think we'll it'll be a lot more like it used to be. People, someone mentioned Benitez earlier. It used to kind of be when Liverpool were attacking. Say it was the four two three one that Benitez was using at one point. It'd kind of be, I mean, it'd be compact to be fair, but it'd be like. Of course it was. It, it'd be like like that, you know. A lot of the time, Stevie and and, and Torres going and getting your goals, and everyone else defends. Um, but I think now, I haven't got the, enough fingers to do it, but I think now it is getting to a point where you are just shifting around the pitch as a compact unit in attack and defence though. Yeah. Not just defensively, like in attack, 
you all move up the pitch together as the ball progresses. I think up the you've pitch. got enough fingers to do the ten outfield players. <laughs> well, they're not long, they're not long enough. To... <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. I think positionless football is where it's going to go. Yeah, positionless football. Yeah, or definitely. total football, total football whatever, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Like I think that's absolutely spot on. To throw one out there, I also think at some point in the next few years we're going to see two up top again. A yeah. return to the two up top. Yeah. Yeah. Because it always comes back around at some point. Yeah. Um, and I, like this is the this is the big thing for me. When I think about it, and again, I am just sort of riffing here, it's, it's defenders know how to mark one nowadays, but my word, that shits them up. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. it's just so different to what they've done for the last 10 years. I, I also think as well, what I'd throw in there is the, the rules have a massive impact True. on this. So, say for example, VAR had a huge impact on the offside trap. And, and teams employing that, and Liverpool went full throttle with it. Unai Emery has gone full throttle with it, and that's because you know it's you're guaranteed to get caught offside by their technology. So, you know, it remains to be seen what technological changes will be made. You know, refereeing changes or whatever, blue cards and all this stuff, mm -hmm. how it'll impact the game. But I think positionless football is definitely, definitely on its way. Mm -hmm. And John Gomez has proven it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, move on a couple again. I'm going to go to the man with no name. <laughs> uh, and he's asked, I'm assuming it's a man, uh, since Edwards is back, which club do you think Liverpool should take over? My short answer for that is a Portuguese one. Same. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> get the South Americans, yeah, get them into Europe. They love it, they love the language. Yeah, nice but, climate, then get them over here. Well, so and I, also we've been shopping there for a while. Yeah, yeah. So I'd add to that as well is I, I started my substack with a look at managers. Um and when I was looking at managers, I was looking for a playing style as opposed to a person. So I was looking for like dominant playing styles where you take lots of shots and you don't face many and you progress the ball a lot and you don't get progressed through very much in that and so many of the Portuguese sides look really good, you know, like, e even the likes of Braga, though, and, and, and Sporting beyond Porto and Benfica, the, the playing style is very, it's proactive, it's dominance, and, and that's the way Liverpool have certainly been the past couple of years and got success from it, so, in addition to the players being good over there and it being a bridge for South America, the playing style over there and the philosophy of Portuguese football is really good. you got Matos' background, Linda's background, Ward's background, um, links with obviously Nunes and, and Diaz and um, Inacio and, and players like that. So Liverpool like Portuguese football, and I can, I can absolutely see why. So I wouldn't be that surprised at all. Okay, well, there you go. Well, that will end the Q and A. Back to the uh, normal programming from next week. Uh, just want to say as well. Obviously, I, I've mentioned to Josh. Um, we did our live shows um, over in Belfast and then Dublin, Sunday and Monday. Um, so many of you came up to us. Like At least over half the people that I spoke to mentioned the Deep Dive show. Um, I passed the message on to Josh. Everyone said they loved it. Um, it. It means so much. Like Obviously, we put a lot of time and effort into the show and stuff, so I'm just glad that you enjoy it. So, yeah, back to normal next week, and thank you very much for in, enjoying it and letting me know that you've enjoyed it. A big thank you to Josh, as always, and Aaron, uh, who you can't see, working wonders uh, behind on the ones, twos, and threes. We'll catch you all next time. Ciao. Hey, thank you so much for checking out the content today. If you want to get your name in and amongst these wonderful people, uh, then head to redmenplus.com. Join as a legend tier subscriber. You're going to get free merchandise, merchandise codes. You're going to get in our Discord, and you're going to get your name at the end of YouTube videos. Yes, redmenplus.com, legend tier status.